Hello, I'm Melissa Levin. I'm a program officer with Jerome Foundation. I use she, her pronouns. Welcome to Jerome Foundation's Jerome Hill Artist Fellowship CV Workshop Webinar. Today, we will be focusing on guidelines and best practices for CV submissions, both specific to the fellowship and we hope more widely applicable for other opportunities. Thank you for joining us. Hey everyone, I'm TA, a program officer with Jerome Foundation as well, and I use she, her pronouns. The goal of today's CV session is to provide some general information, best practices and tips for how to prepare or revise your artist CV for the purposes of applying to grant and fellowship opportunities in the arts, including the Jerome Hill Artist Fellowship, which is currently open now through April 15th. We want to note that while we are sharing general best practices, it's always most important to read thoroughly and follow guidelines for any opportunity you are seeking. We'll also go over how you can contact Jerome staff for help throughout the application process. Hi, I'm Krista Marks. I'm a program officer at Jerome Foundation and I use she, her pronouns. So diving right in, we wanted to start by taking a look at the differences and similarities between a CV and a resume. Throughout this webinar, we will be referring to the fabricated filmmaker Pepper Zanelli. You'll see an example of Pepper's CV on the left of the slide and Pepper's resume on the right. The CV is your comprehensive work history. CV is an abbreviation for curriculum vitae, which can loosely be translated from Latin as the course of one's life. The resume is a fluid document that summarizes specific experiences related to a particular opportunity. In fact, resume is a French word meaning summary. You might think of the CV as the unabridged version of your artistic career and the resume as the abridged version. I want to note that sometimes CV and resume are used interchangeably. So it is good to ask if the preference is not clear. Resumes are summaries designed to emphasize your skills and, and highlight your responsibilities and are organized into categories for easy scanning by the reader. Resumes are adaptable documents that you can easily edit and reorganize to highlight your skills and experience for a specific opportunity that you might be applying to. Resumes are commonly requested for jobs and project grants. For instance, the Minnesota State Arts Board and Creative Capital Project Grant Programs ask for resumes. Jerome Foundation's Jerome Hill Artist Fellowship, however, requires you to submit a CV. So again, that's where we'll focus our discussion today. CVs emphasize comprehensive records of accomplishments and awards. Generally speaking, CVs are created, formatted, and then regularly updated. We recommend continually maintaining your CV, adding to the list everything you do in your career as you go. It should be your running tab. There is usually no page limit for a CV. The Jerome Hill Artist Fellowship requires a CV because we want panelists to have a comprehensive understanding of your artistic work over time. It is key for panelists to know your past and present creative experiences, what you're working on, and where and how you are directing your creative energies your accomplishments and awards, who is supporting your work, and who you're connected to. For this fellowship, a resume leaves out too much information and context. Okay, let's discuss the information and organization of your CV. The beginning will include your name. FYI, we don't require a legal name, just the common artist name that you're known by. It will also include contact information, your email, phone, address, and website. Jerome Foundation's funding is focused on artists residing in the state of Minnesota or the five boroughs of New York City. So we look for a Minnesota or a New York City address. If you have an artist website, provide that website address. Include an education section listing any formal educational degrees you may have completed, such as a BFA, MFA, or a PhD. Listing the enrollment and graduation dates is critical. Jerome staff reviews the start and end dates for any completed degrees to help determine eligibility. Artists currently enrolled in any degree program are not eligible to apply for this fellowship program. 
You may include any trainings that are relevant to your creative practice or career. This might include training programs for specific technical skill sets or for specific content focuses in your work. That being said, please note that formal education, training, and or field-specific degrees are not required to apply for the Jerome Hill Artist Fellowship. Do you include an awards, fellowships, residency section with a clear listing of any previous awards, project grants, fellowships, commissions, or residencies you may have received? If you have received a finalist award or honorable mention that is publicly announced, you can include these here as well. Be sure to include the date you received these awards. Also, please include a clearly labeled generative work section. Generative work is the new original work that you have conceived and created from conception to presentation and for which you have the rights. Your generative work should be presented separate from other artistic projects in which you participated. Don't combine everything you've done in a general headline like artistic experience. As you see on screen, Pepper has a section for films they have directed and films they have co-directed, representing their generative work. This is separate from a section for other film experience, which includes Pepper's non-generative work as an editor and cinematographer. This fellowship is focused on your work as a generative artist, so it's important that this information is clear. Your list of generative work may include commissions, screenings, festivals, recordings, publications, events, premieres, album releases, or exhibitions, solo or group. Please include the presentation or release date for each listing. Also for each listing, Include titles, name of presenter organization, or note if the work was self-produced, and the link, such as runtime or number of pages, and or size, materials, and medium as appropriate. Also, please include a works in progress section if you have any forthcoming confirmed projects or commissions currently under contract, even if they have yet to take place. Simply put the planned presentation, publication, or release date. If you have work that has been completed but has yet to be presented, you can include it in here or in your list of works in the previous section. We just want to make sure that you share this information. Here are some items you should not include on a CV, particularly in applying to this fellowship. Unemployment unrelated to your artistic practice, as the applicant, you are the best judge in determining what is unrelated to your artistic practice. Images of your work or personal photographs, links to additional work samples. Panelists will only review works included in the work sample section of the application. In consideration of visual accessibility for staff and panelists who may use a screen reader, CVs should be formatted with black text on a white background with no complex visual design elements like borders or clip art, patterns or multiple colors. This document is solely informational. As we've previously mentioned, for this fellowship, program staff and panelists review your CV to understand your experience as a generative artist. We want to offer a few field specific suggestions that might help clarify your experience for panelists. First, if you play multiple roles in your own work, such as choreographer and performer, or playwright and actor, list all roles for each of the projects or bodies of work. This slide provides some field-specific examples. Next, it is helpful to include different categories within the generative work section to further categorize your work. Here are some examples. For choreographers, Clearly list evening linked works separate from shorter works. For filmmakers, list shorts separate from features and organize by genre, such as documentary, narrative, or animation, if you work in multiple forms. For writers, separate your full length published books from chapbooks, anthologies, or magazine credits and organize by genre if you work in multiple forms. For composers, list evening length commissions and full albums separate from singular compositions or performances. For technology-centered artists, list 
fully developed and presented works separate from singular event type experiences. For playwrights or performance artists, list produced full length works separate from short works or completed scripts that have not yet received production. And for visual artists, list solo exhibitions separate from two person exhibitions and group exhibitions and or commissions. A note for collaborators, it is especially important that you and your co-applicant have a collaboratively created section in your individual CVs that confirms the work you have generated together. The more clarity you provide, the less guesswork there is for reviewers. Here you can see an example of the categorization just described. As I mentioned before, Pepper separates their generative artistic work from other artistic activity. They have a clear section here of the films they have directed and a separate section of co-directed works. Pepper additionally lists other film experience in a teaching section. This provides a way for reviewers to differentiate Pepper's own original work from their collaborative work and their non-generative work. So we've talked about many of the section headings. One further note about the listing of awards. Some artists list the awards of various types together, and sometimes they separate them into different categories. For example, Pepper listed awards, fellowships, and residencies under one heading, which is great. It is also fine to differentiate by type of award, listing fellowships, awards, commissions separate from project grants and funding history and residencies. Either way is fine. There is no right or wrong here. You might also include, as they are applicable to you or your practice, separate sections for curatorial or producer work, non-generative creative work, or arts-related teaching, related employment, or work for higher experience in your field. Let's review some additional optional items you might consider including on a CV. These items are not required, but we're sharing them because past applicants have included these sections on their CVs as a way to help review panels gain greater content, context for an applicant's overall artistic practice. Optional items include a brief blurb that summarizes your artistic practice or identity as a maker, a list of artist talks, lectures, community engagement activities, your service or volunteer experience, a list of or a link to publicity about your work, including audio, TV, web, and print, and or a bibliography of published interviews, reviews, and other press. Now let's review some best practices for formatting. Lead with your most recent work and accomplishments and list items within a section in reverse chronological order. Use clear, concise, and consistent descriptions for all listings of work and accomplishments and make it easy to read. You will also want to be sure that all of your information is up to date and accurate. We also recommend adding a footer to your CV that includes the page number and your name. Again, this is for ease of reference for staff and for panelists. Use a consistent and readable font using size 11 or 12. Remember, CVs do not need formatting flourishes. Pay attention to length. For Jerome, we have no minimum or maximum length. Other opportunities may have a page limit or even request a one to two page resume. At Jerome, we want a comprehensive view of your artistic practice and career trajectory. And make a PDF version of your CV that preserves the formatting, fonts, and spacing as you want them. Now that you have a general idea of what information to include on a CV and a clearer sense of how we understand the term generative artist, Let's talk about how your CV helps determine your eligibility specifically for the Jerome Hill Artist Fellowship application. Your CV will be reviewed to determine that you are a resident in the state of Minnesota or in the five boroughs of New York City and have been for at least one year prior to application, and that you have a two to 10 year history of creating and presenting your own new original work. An eligible artist's CV should reflect no more than 10 years of credits for creating their own original work. For this application cycle, that means no credits earlier than 2014, and no less than two years of credits. 
that means you have credits dating back to at least 2022. The CV will show that you are not currently enrolled in a degree granting program and are not a tenured professor or the equivalent. Applicants applying as collaborators must provide individual CVs for each artist listed in the application and demonstrate a clear history of creating and presenting work collaboratively. Any applicant who does not provide detailed information in their CV will not be considered past the eligibility review stage. Please be honest in your CV. Do not add or omit experiences to qualify as an early career artist. Applicants will be required to affirm the accuracy and completedness of their submitted CV. Artists who omit any aspect of the full timeline, including dates, of their educational experience, work as a generative artist, or the full range of their awards and prizes will be removed from further consideration if omissions are discovered. As Melissa stated, CVs are first reviewed by Jerome program staff to confirm eligibility. Upon confirming an applicant's eligibility, all applications are forwarded to the field-specific review panels. The panel further uses your CV to get to know you and your tra trajectory of work as an artist better. Review panels are field specific and are comprised of arts professionals and artists, and even sometimes past fellows, with experience and understanding of Minnesota and New York City early career artists. Panelists' wide ranging knowledge encompasses a depth and breadth of aesthetics, methodologies, practices, and ways of working and presenting work in various genres, forms, and styles. You can view past Jerome Foundation panelists on our website if you'd like to learn more at jeromefdn.org slash panelists. Finally, we want to let you know how you can reach us throughout this process. If you have questions about your eligibility or general questions about the program, we encourage you to make a phone call appointment with program staff. You can also send your questions by email. Our email addresses are listed in the fellowship guide and on the website. And remember, fellowship applications are due Monday, April 15th, 2024, before 4 p.m. Central or 5 p.m. Eastern Time. We want to emphasize that our deadline is not midnight. This is so we can be available to support any issues around submission during working hours and before the deadline. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this session, and we hope this has been helpful and informative. And we wish you the best of luck with your application.